This is part 76 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to create a custom validation attribute with an example. Out of the box, ASP.NET Core provides several built-in attributes. We can see some of the common ones right here. For most of our application validation requirements, we could use these built-in attributes. We discussed using some of these built-in attributes in parts 42 and 43 of this ASP.NET Core tutorial. If you have a complex validation requirement that you cannot implement using these built-in attributes, you can create a custom validation attribute and reuse it throughout your project or even in multiple projects if you create it in a separate class library project. Now let's understand creating a custom validation attribute with an example. Here is what we want to do. Consider this new user registration page. Our business requirement is to only allow email address where the domain name is presumetech.com. If any other domain name is used, we want to display a validation error stating email domain must be presumetech.com. We could implement this using the built-in regular expression validator, but let's create a custom validator. This is the same project that we've been working with so far in this video series. I'm going to add a new folder to this project. We're going to place our custom validation attribute class file in this folder. Let's name this folder utilities. To this folder, let's add a new class file. Let's name it valid email domain attribute. To make this class a custom validation attribute, we need to derive from an abstract class provided by ASP.NET Core called validation attribute. This abstract class is in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So let's bring that in by pressing control period. Next, we want to override is valid method provided by this validation attribute base class. Notice when I type override and then space, we see all the methods that we can override. The method that we want to override is this is valid method that takes one parameter. Before we implement the rest of the code, let's see how we are going to use this custom validation attribute. We use a custom validation attribute just like any other built-in validation attribute. In our case, we are going to use this custom validation attribute to validate this email field on our register view. The model for this view is this register view model class and the property is email. Notice on this email property, we're already using several built-in validation attributes. In addition to these attributes, we also want to use our custom validation attribute valid email domain. We do not need the attribute part of the class name. If you want, you can include it, but it's not required. Let's bring in the required namespace, which is employee management dot utilities. Now, what do we want this custom validation attribute to do? Well, we want it to validate the domain part of this provided email to be presumetech.com. What we do not want to do is hard code the domain name presumetech.com within our custom validation attribute because we want it to be reusable with any domain name. So what we really want to be able to do is specify the domain name using a parameter like how we are specifying the action name here. So maybe we want a parameter called allowed domain. And then we specify the domain name, in this case, presumetech.com. Elsewhere in our project, we could specify the domain name as google.com, microsoft.com, etc. Notice at the moment we have a red squiggly on this parameter allowed domain because we do not have a constructor that takes this parameter. So our obvious next step is to include a constructor within our custom validation attribute class. We want to include a parameter for this constructor and the parameter name is allowed domain. So let's copy it and specify it as the parameter. The data type is obviously string. We also need the private backing field. Let's generate that by pressing control period. If we take a look at the register view model now, notice the red squiggly is gone. In addition to specifying the allowed domain name, we also want to specify an error message that we want to display if the domain name is not presumetech.com. We do that using the error message property. At this point, you might be thinking our custom validation attribute class does not have a property called 
error message so our obvious question is where is this property coming from well it's coming from the base class validation attribute notice when I hover the mouse over this property we can see from the IntelliSense the error message property is coming from validation attribute class this is a public property so we could set a value for this property right here and the message that we want is email domain must be presumetech.com I accidentally included a leading space in the error message. We don't need that. Next, we need to provide implementation for this isValid method. Notice this method has an incoming parameter. Where is the value for this parameter going to come from? Well, it comes from the email input field on our register view because this email input field is bound to the email property in our register view model and on this email property we are using our custom validation attribute so whatever value we type in this email input field for example let's type test at test.com so this value test at test.com will be automatically passed to the value parameter of our is valid method notice the data type is object but we know we are expecting a string so the first thing that I'm going to do is convert the incoming value to a string next we need to retrieve the domain part from the email so from this email test at test.com we just want the domain part test.com so we are going to split the string using the add character as the separator for that let's use the split method and then specify at character as the separator this split method returns a string array you can see that from the IntelliSense so let's create a variable of type string array let's call it strings so this strings array is going to contain two strings the first string will have the value test and the second string will have the value test.com which is the email domain and we want the email domain so to retrieve the email domain from the strings array we are going to use the index position 1 because arrays in .NET are 0 index based for the string comparison to be case insensitive let's convert it to the uppercase next we want to compare this value with the allowed domain that is specified right here we know this value will be stored in this private field allowed domain so let's convert that also to uppercase and then compare that this expression returns true if both the values match otherwise false so let's include the return keyword and then run this project in debug mode Notice now if I try to specify a domain which is not presumetech.com we get our custom validation error as expected. Now let's change the domain name to presumetech.com let's also provide the password and confirm password there we go since we have provided a valid email domain which in our case is presumetech.com we have the user account successfully created in ASP.NET Core to create a custom validation attribute create a class that derives from the built-in validation attribute class and then override is valid method we then use the custom validation attribute just like any other built-in validation attribute if the validation fails just like the built-in validation error messages our custom validation error messages are also picked up by validation tag helpers and displayed on the corresponding views we discussed validation tag helpers in detail in our previous videos in the series that's it in this video thank you for listening